Yeah. We out here just living, right? Fuck with me right now. What the fuck I got to do out here to make it black open? And you are now experiencing the world famous Boss Mac Podcast. RNS, y'all are in motherfucking. Today is a beautiful day I'm happy as fuck to be up in here doing this Y'all niggas already know how I get down Nothing but good game when I come around Boss Mac, top soil, y'all got to love the sound Whoa! <laughs> yes, indeed. Here to give you what you need with speed. Ball smack, top soil, a real nigga with a mind that is free. You hear me? Doing me and not nobody else. You understand me? My own nigga out here. Doing the right thing, the right way, trying to make a better way. Fuck with me, don't fuck with them. You know how we get down. The Ball Smack Podcast is always brought to you by Ball Smack Streetwear. Man, go through Ball Smack Streetwear and pick up some Ball Smack Streetwear right now. You see, I got all some, I got all some, uh, PG type of Ball Smack Streetwear right now. See, this that Ball Smack record. You know what I'm saying? That's the little record right there. And then it got the big record on the back. You know what I'm talking about? That big record. You know what I'm saying? It's a nice little hookup, man. You know, just, you know, boss back be making shit, man. Uh, you know, that orange and white just felt right. You know, oh, the Halloween type of vibration, man. Bringing it all together in the fall type of weather. I know I just be saying saying rhymes and shit for no reason but you know that's how that's how niggas be talking out here though like but god bless everybody man i hope i hope i hope this show i hope these words uh find you in good spirits i hope everything is all right with you it's a lot going on out there right now it's super lit out there in them streets man but you know you just got to keep your head together and it's going to be all right, man. You know what I mean? It. So, let me get down, man. You know, the show is also brought to you by uh, uh, Boss Mac giving you game. If you need some game because you're struggling out there with your bitch, holla at the Boss Mac topsoil, man, while I got the hourly race that's great. Jump in the... Um, Description, send me a text message, shoot me your questions, whatnot. We got a lot of questions in, man. I'ma try to I'ma try to address a few things. But you know, shoot me your questions, whatnot, man. You want that phone consultation, man. Let me know. Be like, yo, I need to talk to you though. You understand me? And we set that up. We get the times right for you, so we break it down for you. Uh, yeah, man, it's a beautiful thing. Happy to offer these services to motherfuckers out there that need extra game, man. Like I said, I wish I had that shit when I was coming up. I call up a nigga, say, "Hey, man, oh man, this bitch said this, this bitch said that, and this bitch doing this, man. Oh man, you know, I hate to sound so misogynistic, man, but." I'm not really misogynistic because see misogynistic mean hate bitches and I don't hate bitches. I love bitches. I just 
be quick to check a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Such a beautiful situation going on right now. Feeling real good. Feeling up, man. Energy is is up, man. I feel I feel good, happy, man. You know, when you step outside, man, it almost feel like summertime in October like a motherfucker. But maybe that's just happening out here in California, man. It ain't like that in the mother places. Anyway, let's get it, Bracken. You know how we do, niggas in the news. Niggas in the motherfucking news. And the first nigga in the news. And um, the first nigga in the news is the legendary Alpo. Alpo Martinez. The legendary Alpo Martinez has been gunned down in his home soil of Harlem, New York, man. Legendary figure from Paid in Full, depicted in the Paid in Full movie done by Rockefeller Films. I believe that was Dame Dash and them that shot that. Um, It was a beautiful film. Um... Depicted the lifestyles of uh, some young niggas having money. Three young niggas having money um, in New York. Um, just showed you the the influences that they had on culture. Beautiful thing. And then you've seen the absolute treachery of... Uh, of Alpo against his people's Mitch... Um, who was a beloved, beloved, beloved um, street legend, dictated much style, influence many. Um, them niggas, just all three of them niggas together, influenced much style. Even the bucket hat that I have on right now comes from that, from them niggas. You understand me? This doesn't recycle through the histories of 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 fashion and niggas and, and hip hop throughout the years. But, you know, a lot of people, I mean, if you're checking your histories, you look back and you see motherfuckers like EPMD with these motherfuckers on. That was influenced by these niggas in that era, man. And um, it it was cold. It was it's it cold thing, man. Um, so much, so much style influence, man. The uh, when when you think about the uh, the Eric B and Rakim, uh, paid in full album cover, in the in the picture that was on the back of that album cover with niggas that was really balling. You know, um, Alpo and them, man, they, you know, you look at that movie, man, and you see, you know, it's just a lot. LL Cool J or early, all them niggas, man, is influenced by these niggas, man. <laughs> but Alpo is a cold motherfucker, man, not joking. Um, Killed this man, Mitch. Just over, 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 over discrepancy on 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 chicken prices. You know, thought that felt like Mitch was getting over on him, lied to him. You know, and did in Mitch, and then went down to D.C. and was was getting it in in D.C. and. Start fucking when Wayne Perry had to use Wayne Perry as muscle, if y'all don't know the story, and use a Wayne Perry as muscle. Wayne Perry just a certified uh, serial killer psychopath. You understand? Ah, <laughs> uh, on that DC nigga, you know, fuck, uh, going up in niggas and bitches. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know the, hey man, them DC niggas, man. You know what I'm talking about, man. I ain't disparaging y'all, but you know y'all some savagery. Some of y'all DC niggas. 
But anyway, uh, Wayne Perry, serial killer. So he tells, so he, so, so when, when, when Alpo gets caught, he tells on he 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 tells on Wayne Perry, the serial killer. Mm. And a whole bunch of other motherfuckers. And um gets out of the, gets out of the penitentiary. And since he's you know, hey man. A lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of niggas that tell this kill us, and um, a lot of niggas this, 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 a lot of niggas out here that tell be killers, and he was one of them. So you know, hey man, he got out a long time ago, and he been moving around freely for a long time. He was in the witness protection program. He couldn't take it. They had him up in Northern California somewhere. He said, fuck that. He gonna walk them Harlem streets with his head up. And he walked them Harlem streets with his head up. With snitch allegations. I mean, with he's a snitch. Walking the streets. Still being celebrated, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Which was really like a blemish to New York. This was a, his existence. His, his his walking around untouched in Harlem was a blemish to New York. It was a blemish. It was something the niggas pointed at and just be like, "Damn, man, what are, what do the rules mean? What is going on?" Is everyone terrified of Alpo? Look at him. He's walking around. He's checking people to say shit. People who say negative things, he's pulling up and seeing if you really about that. Niggas ain't about that. Niggas wolfing. He's outside dressing in Gucci. He's having fun. This is too much. <laughs> All the people he killed. How many people he killed? Murder is unforgiven. Murders are never forgotten. How many people he killed? How many uncles, fathers, cousins, brothers, friends has he killed and walks around free? So here's the story that I heard. This is what I heard. I heard this on Star. The story is that it was some type of Halloween party or something. And he was there. And he left with a bitch and a nigga. And they left. And they went and it was on their way somewhere. And the bitch said, I need a Lucy. I need a Lucy. Pull over. And he pulled over. And she got out to get the Lucy. And the car pulled up. And did that work. And then the bitch and the dude, I think, vanished. And then the party that he left, the party that he left at a certain time, like about four o'clock in the morning, because I think he got I think he got killed about three, three thirty or something AM. But at, at like four or something like that. They start playing Celebrate the Times, I think. Celebrate the time. Come on. I think they played that at the party. They was it's deep celebration. Deep celebration. Alpo. Martinez. When I saw Paid in Full and I saw how that unfolded the darkness of his act. You understand me? The darkness of his act. And see, you know, when, uh, but then when I heard his side of the story, you know, because he gave his side of the story. Y'all can listen to that, which is very entertaining. Him telling his story is very entertaining. Alpo 
telling this story. You know, he got the voice, his voice. Man, that nigga influenced a lot of shit. His voice was dope. He's funny telling the story. That nigga was an entertaining motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you, man, niggas be reality ins out here, man. He could have been a. <laughs> he's a gangster, though. You feel me, though? If he's a nigga's a killer, but he's he, he hella funny and telling the stories, man. But anyway. Let him tell the story. Mitch was getting them for the chickens. Like, I think it was like five racks per chicken off type shit. So we talk about 30 chicken. You know what I'm saying? So niggas, that's a, a, a you know, it, you know, it's a weird thing, man. You know, gangsters relations, you know what I'm saying? Niggas. Niggas feeling like you did a man. Niggas trying to kick niggas. Oh man, nigga, gang, dealing with gangsters is a trip. Psychopaths is a trip, man. You just, oh my god, you got to be so careful. Niggas think you lying, get you killed. You know what I mean? Niggas thinking that you lied about some shit, get you killed. But anyway. I feel like, you know, it's just a dark act to kill your bro. I, 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 you know, when you kill your people, I mean, you know, it's just it was just a dark act. Him killing Mitch was a dark act. I don't give a fuck how he justify it. It was a dark act. But then the telling, I mean, you know, and 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 he, you know, once again, I'm not I'm not going to go deep off into this right here, but when he hired Wayne Perry, he hired a he knew he was a serial killer before he hired him, right? Now, if if you doing business with a serial killer, right? If 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 it go bad, if anything go bad with with your business relationship, he got to go quickly because he's a serial killer. You understand me? So we cannot excuse Alpo from telling on the serial killer lunatic because I mean you knew he knew he was a serial killer before I mean you know what I'm saying you can't tell man it's no telling even though he was a serial killer there's no telling man like you can't tell it's just a blemishes man you know he he was so quick to kill motherfuckers I'm surprised he just didn't pull it put together like a twist for Wayne Perry and kill him these niggas was just cry. these niggas was doing each other so low it was just crazy man but anyway I feel like Alpo walked the plank himself he by coming back to Harlem he was like look here man I am going to live my life until a man steps up and puts me down. I'm going to walk around here and y'all going to have to step up and put me down. And somebody stepped up and put him down. It had to be a youngster. I'm banking that it was some youngsters, man. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, man, it's very fascinating. The death of Al Paul Martinez is very fascinating because to me, it almost represent like a cultural it's like a it's like an end of an era like his life somehow ref, was like the archetype for the crack era his life was like a archetype for the American black drug dealer from that era from New York. Like the at the 
apex and how it influenced how he influenced he i mean you know he influenced a lot of style like on a mass level unknowingly like through rap artists that through ll cool j and other motherfuckers who mimicked his style really projected that out to the world and you talking about billions and billions of dollars in fashion you know influenced by alpo you know you know what i'm saying you know um you know it is 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 really like you know but then you see the you know what i'm saying like to me when i observed their characters it seemed like it created like um individuals that uh they began to thrive off the uh, glory and the lifestyle and the prestige in that arena, along with the monstrous acts, you know, killing Dulo and homies, killing motherfuckers. You know, it was crazy, man, them niggas. So I feel like his death is like an end to that era and a new era is coming in of even more this is like in this new era is going beyond to me what 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 his era was with the new york drill motherfuckers man and it's interesting that you see you see alpo get killed on halloween right right in the midst of the rolling loud shit right where you have the new york drill rappers on display where you had the uh the k flock and the b love dude uh fighting um um what's the nigga name um i think his name is his name is k son k flock yeah k flock and k flock of b love and they fight yeah ron suno all right these little drew the, now i'm quite sure the rolling loud promotions promoters knew that these niggas had beef and still had these niggas backstage so these niggas have a fight and whatnot and then they get up on stage they performances they performances these niggas performances was super whack right it was basically them just up on stage you know what i'm saying just be- like like they- it was just them up on stage uh hell of yelling just record playing really looked like they was banging on the, the niggas in the crowd that they had the, the other niggas the kate the 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 uh ron suno nigga i guess they must have <laughs> some shit so they aiming they shit they ain't even worried about the whole arena they just like aiming they shit at these man then nigga man so it's like that era of new york is dead you know that alpo era is officially dead with alpo that's the way i see it and we have a new it's a new new york young nigga energy out there there's some other shit that don't have nothing to do with the with the (laughs) with the alpo eras and i and i and 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 i'm i'm willing to bet that it was some young niggas who put that together it was some young niggas who did that 
It, it might have been some niggas who just randomly is like, is that that nigga Alpo right there? Oh, shit. Let's just go get him now. Let's just go get it over with. And truth be told, I'm not, listen, and I'm not in, in the... Gl- I'm not in the glorification of killing the rats, right? I'm not in the glorification of killing the rats. You understand me? But the rats need to be killed. The rats need to be killed. I was looking at the the Kodak Black killing the rats video, man. That shit is hard that is i fuck with kodak black that is that that is a hard video killing the rats the way that nigga look that nigga facial expression in there is some, that is that nigga that little nigga look absolutely brazy man i appreciate that look right there I, that video that's my favorite video right there right now killing the rats <laughs> I, and you know what I got up like about y'all not gonna believe me man when I tell y'all this shit I ain't gonna believe me man nigga I got up at like about I got up at like about 3 o'clock in the morning and cut on some Kodak Black. Got some shots of espresso and cut on some Kodak Black killing the rats. Killing the rat. She calling me yak. He's spinning the rats. The little bitches in it. He's spinning the rats. I'm throwing it back. Hey, I'm killing the rat. I'm killing, man, killing the rats is dope, man. So, I was killing the rats, and then Alpo was just dead. Now, <laughs> Alpo getting killed. Brightened a lot of motherfuckers' day, man. Alpo getting killed, bright motherfuckers' day, and Alpo. Alpo getting killed, bright motherfuckers' day. And Alpo. I don't know, man. I think sometimes some niggas be wanting it, man. Some niggas be like needing that glorious death. I, I think I think some niggas need that glorious death, that hell of bullets death. They need that. You know what I'm saying? This is a this is a plus for New York. This makes New York look like you know we clean it up. You know what I'm saying? We cleaning it up, you know? And, um, you know, hey, restoring the feelings, man, New York. Restoring the feelings, man. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Now, as we see, as we see Alpo get gunned down, Naturally, we have to turn our eyes towards 6ix9ine and wonder if he's next. You understand me? And wonder if he's next. You know, is he going to be reckless out here? Is he going to disrespect? I'm quite sure he's 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 reconsidering, you know, uh, movements. Movement strategy is being reconsidered right now. You know, he was reckless. Uh, He been out there in the open in New York and shit. You know. He ain't got caught slipping out there yet, but you know, hey. You know what I'm saying? 
So if six nine gets touched, if six nine gets caught out here, what does that mean for whack one hundred? I heard whack one hundred on Clubhouse today. You know what I'm saying, and, and you know. I wonder, man, like, cause if they get six nine, man, you know, um, the streets not gonna forget that he was managing. It, the Wag One Hundred started managing six nine. The streets not gonna forget that. They just want them stars and bars too, though. Like, niggas want them stars and bars. Whoever did that to Alpo, them was some nice stars and bars. Right there. Stars and bars. When something like that happens, you know, um, you know, an elevation. A youngin. This is a youngin, man. This is a youngin. A youngin is elevated because of this. I feel it, man. A youngin. A youngin took initiative and said, look here, man. I'm tired of this. Or he might have got directed like by by an older nigga, like nigga, go handle that. It 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 a youngin is elevated. The, the crew that put in that work is elevated. Wherever they are, they people know. They are like, you know, and if it was somebody who had true vendetta, if it was somebody who Maybe his uncle or, or some family member got killed and he got, and that was the, oh man, they in full salad. I, I, <laughs> that's good killing. If such a thing is this, if we want to talk about murder, if we want to talk about good killing, bad killing, that's what you call good killing. Good killing right there. That's a good killing right there. I hate to say it like that, but you know, and Alpo know, like, hey, man, I'm going to live my life until one of y'all niggas step up and put me out of my misery. And they did. So, in closing, I could just go ahead and say, you know, I can't honor none of the snitching and telling that he did. You know what I'm saying? And if it was his intention to kamikaze on some shit, you know, not give a fuck. I mean, you know, he could have gone and accepted all the Because, I mean, niggas was treacherous out there in a period, you know. He might as well went on and accept that and then went hard in the penitentiary and just went out like a pure high legend. And just only had the killing his homie as a blemish on his record. You know what I'm saying? Versus the killing your homie and the telling and all. You know what I mean? The telling. <sighs> Niggas to forgive killing the homie. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas to forgive killing the homie. Niggas can't forget the telling. You know. And then the other people kill, like, we don't know. Alpo, he's out of here. I know a lot of niggas don't like it. Let's move on. I talked about that way too long. Damn near half hour talking about Alpo and shit. All right, now. Another nigga in a ne- Oh, let's see. Jada Pinkett clobbering Will Smith out here. Clobbering. Clobbering. She starts trending with some shit talking about it's, it's difficult to maintain sex in marriage. <laughs> Down and dirty in it. 26. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. It's incredible. It it's really, hard. I know. I'm, I'm I sure. I mean, the thing that Will and I talk about a lot is the journey. I mean, we started in this at a very young age, mm-hmm. you know, 22 years old. It's crazy. That's why the accountability part really hit for me yeah. because I think yeah. you expect your partner to know 
especially when it comes to sex. Right. It's like, well, if you love me, you should know. Right. Mm -mm. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you love me, you should be able to read you my should mind. Read my mind. Mm, putting it out there, signing, signing text, right? Internet goes in on her. She's trending on Twitter. Oh, Will, she's in his, she's on Will's head. It's horrible. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, but when you really listen, it's like, what did the bitch really say? You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, you know, bitch, yeah, it's difficult to maintain some good fucking after that long. And especially y'all some sexual deviant motherfuckers doing all top of everything type shit. So yeah, it's gonna be hard. You know, I know the bitch had to get a pussy. Re I know she got a pussy rejuvenation. You feel me? So she must have been putting in some work. It had to be a lot of work getting put it in to get the pussy rejuvenation. Even though I guess you could need a pussy rejuvenation after one kid. So I, what, what am I talking? You know. But anyway, then she come out and she talk about. Cause I got time Y'all need to listen to the whole interview Red table talk interview Y'all like uh, Get off of me Type shit Y'all tripping And uh No man Everybody know what it is man I wonder is these subtle jabs Subtle like she doing these subtle jabs get will to go ahead and be like i'll fuck it bitch out let's do the divorce bitch take take half a billion here's here's your 500 million bitch you win bitch you know what i mean like man I read a quote. Where's that quote at? My dictionary, man. I had my dictionary, man. I had a little quote I was going to read. It's probably in the bathroom, man. Anyway, man. Jada, man. She just, man, Jada is just, uh, you know, man, uh, she knows she would have been better off Tupac Widow. Being Tupac Widow would have been way more popping. <laughs> she chose wrong. Man, it just go to show you, man, that no matter how much paper you have, it don't guarantee you respect from bitches, man. You still could be disrespected by bitches no matter what. No matter how much paper you have. No matter how much paper you have. The only solution is you can't put bitch on pedestal, man. You can't. You know what I'm saying? Back in them early days, man, in the 90s, man, when all these niggas was chasing after Jada because she was in Minister Society and all these other little films and shit. She was the hottest little bitch and everybody wanted to fuck. Uh, I'm going to get... What's the name of that motherfucker? That 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 movie with one of them Keenan Ivory Wayans brothers, man. She just was a little out there, bitch, man. Niggas wanted to fuck Jada. Niggas chasing Jada, all these niggas, man, and Will, man, he just got out there, man. Got in front of the chasing. And then all these gay rumors and shit, that rumors with, uh, with that dude from above the rim, I forgot his name, that was married to Martin Lawrence, uh, not Martin Lawrence, to Gina from the um Tashina Arnold I mean Tashina Camp Tashina I can't remember these bitches name but anyway man a light skinned bitch from Martin um so supposedly see see it's so weird when you think about all that shit that was happening back then because it was supposedly so see so you got Martin and then then the Gina bitch 
And then Gina fucking with dude from above the rim, but then dude from above the rim supposed to be low key gay with Will Smith. So I'm trying to wonder what was going. I mean, I wonder what was going on back then with Martin being popping like that, and they was like such a lit show. Like everybody wanted to beat him. Like all the couples wanted to beat him. Like you know what I'm saying. I don't know what if Martin was observing that shit. Like damn, her husband is over there on some homosexual shit with Will Smith, and I can't say nothing about it. Fuck it, I'm gonna put my bid in though, low key, because I know she fuck, she really feeling me, and we could just turn our, 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 um, our, Mar- our, our Martin Show relationship into reality, which was some. They must have been on drugs thinking about that shit. Anyway, Jada Pink is shitting on Will Smith once again. Future jumps in, say I'd rather hang with Jada. Does a tweet that goes viral. And then Future takes it more further with the disrespect and drops the merch. I'd rather hang with Jada merch. In total disrespect of Big Will Smith, like Big Will Smith can't do shit to f- touch him. Niggas need to, man, listen, man. You know what? I feel like all this sucker shit that this bitch is doing to Will Smith is jeopardizing his film career. I bet you he never thought. In his wildest dreams, that a bitch sunning me, clowning me as a sucker. Do you see? Look, look. I want niggas to recognize. I want niggas to recognize a thing. I want y'all to recognize a thing. I want y'all to recognize some shit. I want niggas to recognize an awful truth, man, right now. This an awful truth right here, nigga. This an awful truth, nigga. Listen to this game, nigga. You could be in a sucker situation for many years, for 20, 30 years, spans of suckerism. You could be in suckerism to where over a span of time you could be in suckerism over a span of time like you could be a sucker wife a bitch in su- in your suckerism have a baby right and then that baby grow up to become a man and learn how to deal with bitches and perceive bitches and be able to look back at you at his father and be like he is a sucker like your own your son can be born from your suckerism grow up receive the understanding and bitches and bitch management and then look back at your shit and go wow my pop Pops is, I love my moms, but God damn, Pops is a sucker out here, bro. Wow. And and have logical conversation with his moms and be like, mom, why is you clowning Pops like that? You just treating this nigga. Son, it is what it is. This is Jada and Jaden conversations and shit. You understand me? Like, damn, my daughter just going, God damn. Your suckerism can span time, decades. Other people who didn't have consciousness of adult can grow up into adulthood and perceive your suckerism that perpetuated, that brought them here and continue to now.
Hey man, listen here, man. I want to say shout out to Jada Pinky, man. One of my favorite bitches. No disrespect to her, man. She been a boss ever since, man. I always knew that, man. Shout out to Jada. Shout out to Will. I don't know, man. I'm just saying. All right. Another nigga in the news is motherfucking Kevin Gates on million dollars worth of game. Trying to help niggas, man, and niggas. Niggas with niggas niggas can't hear what he talking. And I'ma I'm gonna speak on it right now. <clears throat> Once again, semen retention. You understand me? Semen retention. I can't stress how niggas need to conserve the nuts. You understand me? I'm not going to beat niggas over the head with this because it's way too complicated. It's way too esoteric. Niggas is way too ignorant. It's mind-blowing. It's a mind-blowing concept to niggas uh, of semen retention. Busting a lot of nuts. All energy. It's all energy. It's all energy. You can't see it, though. You can't see it. You can't see it. You just, the good feeling of the nut, the, the fucking. You can't see it. Now, here's what I notice also, man, with certain bitches, with certain bitches, with, 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 with certain bitches, a nigga in the, in the, in the sessions with these bitches, nigga got in like connections with the bitches. I'm talking about in states of like. Where it was it was just motherfuckers connected with no busting a nut just just connected you feel me like in like a energy loop type shit I have been like With certain bitches though Only certain bitches This is established with Like Not all bitches Certain bitches Is 69 loops And shit But just, we just 69 And for like Hour And then that's It's a wrap Didn't bust a nut Bomb session Without busting a nut though. I ain't practiced no tantric nothing. I ain't even know nothing about that shit. But it, I guess that's the type of. I don't know. But Kevin Gates. Semen retention. Keep your eye on Kevin Gates. Him knowing that and practicing that. Keep your eye on Kevin Gates and his creativity. I believe all that is connected with creativity and 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 what you're doing. I I I could go deep into some more. I, I'm I'm gonna point out some shit. 
I'm gonna point out some shit. I'm gonna point out some shit. With with very creative individuals, I'm gonna point out some shit. Look at this. With your eye on semen retention. Look at this. A lot of niggas. Right? This is what happened to niggas, right? I feel like motherfuckers be I feel like motherfuckers be like highly sexual charged motherfuckers, right? Coming into the peak of the sexual chargedness. That's why most rap star that's why all all rappers all all rap stars are young right the masculine energy is coming into prime right these individuals ain't really fucking that many bitches as they rising up because they don't have no money and they focused on their art and their craft But then if they have success and become popular, then they could burn out. They energy on bitches. They could just focus their energy on bitches. Right? <sighs> and be fucking so many bitches. And 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 then the creativity go down. I think different individuals who extended their careers and their creativity, they figure that shit out. And then you hit the brakes. I think different individuals don't. I'm OD. People like Rick James and Marvin Gaye and Bobby Brown. And they burn out their energy. I'm in theory right now. <sighs> but this is an observation that I have that I notice. And bitches can tell when you drained of all your energy. All right, let me move on from that. Shout out to Kevin Gates speaking on semen retention. <coughs> y'all niggas better start. I'm just trying to tell you. I know in this age of the type of drugs and shit out there, man, it ain't possible. You can't be on Molly and shit like that and even go into any of these dimensions, Percocets and all that type of shit, man. Niggas get you know, powder. You niggas have no discipline. Can't manifest nothing, can't do shit, but just degenerate into motherfucking animalistic, can't control yourself, deviant, sexual practices ass motherfuckers, man. I'm glad y'all niggas afflicted. Mostly, I'm glad niggas afflicted, but you know what it is? It's like this, man. You know, in a way, I'm glad that y'all niggas have like y'all weaknesses and shit that make y'all stumble around and fuck up with bitches like that. I'm glad y'all have them. And I'm glad, I'm really kind of glad that a lot of motherfuckers don't believe nothing that I'm saying and never really motherfuckers don't. I'm glad. But see, here's the twist for me. See, 
I gotta tell y'all the motherfucking truth. I gotta warn y'all motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? That's the that's the job of the watchman. You feel me? When you get appointed watchman over motherfuckers, you gotta warn them, right? Because if I don't warn y'all and y'all get caught up, then I get punished too. See, God will punish me for not telling y'all motherfuckers. But see, as long as I tell y'all motherfuckers, and then you 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 go ahead and fuck up anyway, then that shit is on you and I, it's all good for me. So, like I said, I don't really give a fuck if motherfuckers don't believe the shit that I be saying. I just got to put it out there, though. All right. Let me see. I'm talking all along and shit. All right. Uh, I want to say I saw Capadonna. Another nigga in the nose. Capadonna on Kitchen Talk. I know y'all don't give a fuck about Capadonna. I know y'all don't give a fuck about Cappadonna, but I like seeing Cappadonna. He look good, nice, and crispy. I like I, I like this energy and vibe. Shout out to uh, Maino for having that nigga on there. I fuck with Maino. I like I like how Maino getting out there swimming with the youngins, man, and making sure he stay out there with the youngins. I like I like how Maino do that. I like how Maino do that. Shout out to Maino. All right, uh, one more nigga in the nose. I want to say, uh, NLE. Chopper, I saw NLE Chopper on Lip Service uh, podcast with Angela Yee. Uh, I don't know if y'all niggas fuck with Angela Yee and her podcast, man, but shout out to Angela Yee and her, her podcast and shit, man. NLE Chopper was on there, and I suggest motherfuckers go kind of peep that out man i thought it was a good observation where you could see like when you see nle chopper in the midst of those bitches you could just see how he is just the life force he is the life energy and these bitches look like they are in that like they just need the energy you could just look at those bitches and it just look it, it you just see how they need the energy you 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 i mean they got on bomb clothes they outfits look good right they got on makeup you feel me but i could just see that they need his energy like they need is you could just see like if he wanted he could just he could just have all of those bitches right now like you could so let me ask you you did, you did a letter to my daughter and you know we mm-hmm. had had a chance to put that on on the breakfast club. yeah yeah, yeah. i called i'm like man yeah i gotta do this for me <laughs> mm-hmm. so how hard was that because i know there was a period of time where you weren't able to see your daughter it's it's still like that and we're going through like court stuff to where now i do facetime calls and i feel like it's a step and it's very beneficial because at the same time that I'm talking to my daughter, I can ask my baby mother certain stuff and like, you know what I'm saying? It's not the best of a relationship, but it's like, it's a start. Mm-hmm. And, um, this, you know, take stuff slow, being patient. I feel like God will give you everything when you 
when you need a divine time. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, oh, never really trip. I voice my pain whenever I think about it. Like, yeah, I write it down, write my music, voice my pain. But it's never like I'm dwelling on nothing because I know like everything is about timing. Mm-hmm. So I'm never like, damn, man, can't see my daughter and my feelings about it. I, you know, most of I do, I share the tell about it like for like 30 minutes and boom, I'm right. good. And there's nothing wrong with feeling your feelings too. Yeah, for sure. Because you hear me at the end of the day. So I'm saying they come with life. But like just embracing that shit and changing it to, turning it to a positive is what really you know, matters the most. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's hard, man. I can't mm-hmm. even, but at least you've made some headway. So, and I think yeah. it's time too. Because sometimes, mm-hmm. it, like you said, being patient, mm-hmm. it does take time for people to, Mature and get into different yeah, yeah. spaces where they're like, okay. I for sure had to mature because I'd be lying to say like, um, oh, motherfucker wasn't doing nothing to deserve it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Certain shit you do, you got to realize certain things. I When I was younger, I didn't really, I'm still young, but like when I wasn't in the space I'm in now, I didn't realize the Mentally smallest shit can hurt a woman. Yeah. Like it don't matter how small it is, it'll hurt you. So I had to learn how to be, now I learned like, Certain stuff you can't do. Like, first, one thing I for sure learned is, like, no matter what space y'all in, no matter where y'all at, don't never leave no woman, like, while she pregnant. Like, whatever you do, even if y'all on bad terms, still make sure you there, like, the most you can be. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you you know that you can't be there every day, be there every other day, you know? And that's what I learned. I feel like that's where the most hurt came from throughout that situation. Well, that's very honest Mm -hmm. and self-reflective. They just need his energy. I just, y'all niggas check that out. And see, that's how niggas should be feeling, man. Niggas should be like, cut the head. Cut the head. Now, see, his energy is at a high level. See, I don't even know. See, he owns some spiritual shit over there, too. I don't know if he over there practices some shit, too. But I'm trying to told y'all niggas. See, that be what it be, man. It be niggas' energy. Niggas be radiating the energy, man. All right, now. Let's do some reader listener email. And um, first, before I begin the reader listener email, I want to make an observation, a uh, game observation that I was thinking about. Because um, I was thinking about some shit, man. Like, one of my people's man um, had a situation, man, where he had to. Uh, it was just like a bitch he was fucking around with. Like, wasn't even really... Like, a little... You know, just a bitch he fucking around with. You know what I'm saying? And... Her baby daddy, like, a sucker. You know, fake tough nigga. You know what I'm saying? Tried to, you know... You know, tried to get upset and do some stuff. And, and this nigga just really just... He don't. Even, he didn't even want to keep the bitch. This is a bitch. He just fucked with a couple times. He, you know, had no intentions on keeping the bitch. But he just had to put the smash on the baby daddy because the baby daddy was out of pocket. You know what I'm saying? And then the bitch was just so thankful and just really clinging to the nigga, just really ready to do everything he said. And he wasn't even all like that. It was just really like, you know, he just seen that the nigga needed to get smashed and he recognized that he was a buster and just smashed him and just kind of alleviated a problem for the bitch. You know, and it made me reflect and think like, at the end of the day, man, a lot of bitches out here, I be thinking, man, a lot of bitches out here just really you know, be needing liberation from niggas, from the from the nigga in their life. Like, bitch don't even, bitch hate the nigga. But the nigga is an impressed upon a bitch and can't, can't really shake a nigga. And, you know, you, you know, and, and at the end of the day, it's like damn near like, Every bitch that's like 
that's like kind of bad, like a bad bitch. There's any bitch out here that look good that's like a bad bitch, any kind of gang, anything out here. It's you gonna have to liberate a bitch from you gonna have to liberate a bitch from a nigga. If you wanna if you want her to be on your team, you gonna you gonna have to do a liberation. Which is, you know, you might have to you know, you might have to face off with a with a nigga who don't wanna who don't wanna abdicate. And that's a phenomenon out here, man, with the uh bitches can't leave cause niggas is violent. You gotta liberate a bitch. You gotta liberate a bitch. A lot of bitches would be like, am I willing to liberate this bitch? Shit, you might have to liberate a bitch from her son. If you want the bitch. <laughs> liberation, man. Is a bitch worth the liberation? You know what I'm saying? Certain niggas, you might have to go the distance with them. You know what I mean? Or let it be known that you're willing to go to this. Then they see that and be like, okay, well, I ain't willing to go to this body. Bit. <sighs> Liberation. All right, now. I got some reader listener emails. Came in on Texas. Let's see what we got. We got a few of them. Let's see. <laughs> oh. Let's do the one on the ground. All right. Mmm. Good vibrations all around. Can't even get down. Got the love is out. Alright, let's see what we got. Alright, babe. Uh all right, let's do this one first. Alright. Alright. A nigga from Kansas City writes that ball smack. He say ball smack. I really need some game. I'm an older nigga in Kansas City. Not old, but I'm not 30 anymore. I haven't been able to bag a bitch for real in four years since my relationship with my baby mama ended. I don't see many opportunities to meet bitches in public. I'm not from the city and I don't have a lot of old friend resources here. I've resorted to online dating, but either I can't get them out on dates or they flake at the time of the scheduled date. I'm the same nigga that never had a problem getting to maintaining a rotation. Now I can't get one bitch. I still look good for my age and still have game. I think I've been watching you for 10 years. Any game for an older nigga. All right. Problems getting bitches where you are and you're not from the city and you don't have resources. <sighs> it's hard out there. But here's the thing, bro. I believe this. This is a belief that I have. And it's a universal belief that it extended th through all places. 
Now, um, this is a dangerous thing that I want to speak on, but it it works in, um, you know, it is a never fail technique for gathering bitches. It is a never fail technique for gathering bitches. I want all niggas to listen to me right now. This is a never fail technique to gather bitches. Listen. Now, if you have money, you have resources, right? And you understand the culture, right? Now, the one individual that for sure always gathers bitches all throughout the day, wherever they go, like starting in the morning, is your, you know, um, friendly neighborhood drug dealer or scammer or any like successful street person this is the successful in the game is having money anybody like that that is having money and is really you know what i'm saying the way they do it the way they do it is see they dress crispy they are when they step out the crib it's crispy in the morning to go to the to go to to the to the uh starbucks crispy so if you move around crispy so like i call it like uh it's really like a baller look it's really like a baller look. So what are we talking about? Minimum. Crispy, crispy footwear. Your, your, your tennis shoes is crispy. Fresh out the box looking. Going to Starbucks. You wearing, you know, nice new shit at Starbucks when you go shopping for groceries crispy crispy everywhere cause there's bitches everywhere not just at the club not just at the bar bitches is everywhere and if you crispy everywhere, bitches is gonna choose and you're gonna have an advantage on bitches because they're gonna be in regular, they're gonna be dressed down, they're gonna be like, they're not gonna like, cause bitches at the bar and the club, they put it, they got a force feel that they already, you know, they, I done dressed up, I done this, I done that, you know, my mind state is, is up to this and but when you just out and about crispy that's where the true gathering is and when you're crispy every day and you go to the same starbucks and you go to the same grocery store and you go to the same mall them bitches in there is gonna start going hey hey i notice you you're smelling good every day you crispy every day see i bet you not crispy every day i bet you like take it down days off and shit And you become invisible to bitches on your days off. 
If you're not crispy, they don't know this. You know, you gotta have the right shit on, bro. Like, you gotta, you know, you gotta. A lot of shit, bro. Like, if you crispy every day when you move around, we wouldn't be having this conversation, bro. Cause you would be gathering. It's it's bitches every day if you crispy. And you go out. You go you you crispy and you go get a smoothie. Crispy and go to, you know, Ike, IKEA, Home Depot. If they have it out there where you at. Whatever they have. Be crispy. This is what the ballers do. The ballers are and see, regular mind state, regular nigga mind state, don't think like baller mind state, because baller mind state is he's at work every day, kind of like all the time work. You know what I'm saying? So I'm crispy. The uniform is crispy. You know what I'm saying? Criminal uniform is crispy. Successful criminal uniform is crispy. Your uniform should be crispy. It just... There's no way... At any age... I remember, man... I remember... um. Back in the days, man, when I was like, I was, I was probably like about 30, 32. And I used to go to this coffee shop. And this I tell oh, this dude had to be in his, he had to be, he had to be 60. Italian. I thought he was a mafia, so he had to be a mafia motherfucker. I just he just came to the coffee shop every morning. Super crispy. Leisure gear though. Dress appropriate. You know what I'm saying? Comfortable, you know. Every day. Different Air Max, crispy, sweatsuit, crispy, sweats. Base, just crispy bitches loved him I watched the bitches in the shop they loved him he could have I, I, I mean he probably was fucking one of these couple, they loved him because he was crispy and he pulled up in the thing he was switching cars it was I have seen one of my homies, man. One of my homies, man. Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace. Big Toot. My nigga, Big Toot. Big black nigga. Look, bro. But that nigga was crispy. Crispy, 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 crispy. I gotta get I should put up a picture of that nigga, man. I got it. Man, that nigga, man. Black monster looking nigga. If you seen him, you you be man. Monster. The essence. Bitches! Bitches! Big do that, bitches! Crispy, 
try being crispy every day. If you got paper, nigga, just say, man, okay. Build up the kicks rotation. Build it up. Build up the kicks rotation. You some high end in there, some Jordans up in there. You saying mix in some other shit, some low end crispy shit. This is this so you got like a dynamic range of shit. You know you ain't got to have all up up popping. Just get a couple poppings up here and then mix in some mid range shit, man. And you know what I'm saying? And just you know develop a, a you know so you have you know what I mean? So the bitches, you feel me? And just be crispy every day, man. Get a little jewelry, man. You know what I'm saying? A little, you know, you know what I'm saying? Catch a little eye, you understand me? A little jewelry, you know, a little chain, a little earring or something, a little watch. You know what I mean? You gotta be smelling right, you know what I'm saying? You know, invest in, I say invest in three big colognes, man. Invest in three big colognes. Spend 500 Spend 500. Spend 500. Three big colognes, man. 500 on cologne, nigga. Get right. You understand me? You know what I'm talking about? You know? Yeah, nigga, man. Get out there, man. You know what I'm saying? Moving around, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Every day in the sun. Wash the car, nigga. Crispy gear. And then see what happened, nigga. You know what I mean? Go shopping crispy. See that when you go to the mall already crispy. You know what I'm saying? On Wednesday. You know what I'm talking about? Like at four in the afternoon. You know what I mean? You're gonna catch an eye, bro. Like get a smoothie, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Get you a ring or something, man, with a little, with a little skink on it. Skink, skink, skink. You're holding that, holding that smoothie cup, nigga, with the little skink sipping in the mall, nigga. Bitches, you know what I'm saying? Let's see. Come on, man. Come on, man. This shit is easy, bro. Like. Nigga, crispy, little smoothie. You understand me in the mall with the pinky ring on it. I ain't got on one right now, but the pinky ring with a little skank on it. Not forcing, just kind of on there like. Flicking through some clothes, a little bitch come over there. Helping out, trying not to look at that ring, nigga. Crispy, notice the kicks is crispy. Don't hear me talking. Now it is complications with the baller look, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, you 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 know, you probably want to have a pistol with you in the car. You feel me, like? You know, because niggas is going to see you too. And, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to carry yourself a certain type of way. Be prepared for, you know what I'm saying? But these is the, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is, I mean, I'm just saying like, but it's doable. You, you just got to know how to move around, right? You got to move around good and protect yourself. You know what I'm saying? But this is how it's done right here, like, in real life, man. Because, see, all that online dating shit, man, that's, that's you know, ain't nothing like a bitch seeing you in person crispy. And she done seen you multiple times crispy because you're going through these areas. You know what I'm saying? See, I be going through areas, certain areas all the time, man. I'm always I'm always grocery shopping. I'm always at the coffee shops. Feel me? I mean, you know. 
Plus, I just like going out, walking around, having, you know, go out, walk around crispy. I done stayed on this too long, man. Let me get off of this. Uh, shit gonna be four hour show or some shit. One nigga talking this damn long. Okay, hold up. Let me see. Let me find some other shit. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me get this other. Okay. Okay, I got. Okay, this one. Okay, this. Instagram. All right. All right. This long one right here. All right, here we go. One more again. Ball smack. All right. Where this nigga from? All right. Another reader listener email. He say, Ball smack. A few years ago, I moved to a new state to be closer to home. I was going to move back to Cali, but I had a little college bitch with some bread and some paper waiting on me. So I figured worst case scenario, if shit didn't work out, I'm back on the West Coast. So fuck it. Plus, I had a female cousin pressing me about staying with her in the same state. But I'm the type of nigga that likes to have my own shit, so I declined for a few months and eventually decided to take up my cazo on her offer. This is confusing. Wait a minute. I declined for a few months, but eventually I decided to take up my offer, take up my cazo on her offer and pulled up on her. Pulled up. Soon after I arrived, I felt something was off with the bitch so i fired her and went on to stay with my cousin literally the same day i literally in the same day in an elaborate scheme my cousin ended up stealing one of my pistols and giving it to a nigga I ended up popping up at my old bitch house only to look for my pistol during the visit. The bitch told me, told me, fuck that, come stay with her. Shit was cool until the bitch started tripping off, tripping, tripping about me working and chasing paper. So I fired her again. So basically, Okay. Right after this, me and my blood brother started beefing where gunplay was almost involved. The whole time my pops is on his deathbed dying from cancer and niggas started reflecting and thought the only motherfucker who wanted to see me win was the bitch. <laughs> I ended up proposing to the bitch. The next day, my pops died. And the day after that, the bitch shitted on my proposal like she was purposely trying to crush a nigga. After all this, I said, fuck everything and everybody just get paper. I stopped hollering at bitches and just work, work, work to get back on my shit. Since then, me and my bro are back cool, but I'm having a hard time hollering at bitches. My wardrobe, whip, crib, everything is A1, but I'm just having a hard time trusting people after my family did a nigga and my pops. Passing. At the same time, I felt something just break inside of a nigga it's been a few years, but now I'm ready to get back out there. But in my heart, I feel like a motherfucker can sense the lingering effects of BS, of the BS. I know this is hella long, but you ain't never lied to a nigga. I need to get back right. Talk to me. All right. You know what, man? Um, 
I've always said that whenever you are in a time of crisis, whenever, whenever you have a tragedy in your life where it's a death, where anytime it's a somebody dies. You know what I'm saying? Close to you, mother, father, brother, sister, you know what I'm saying? Child or some shit like that. Do not, you cannot make no life. You can't make no big decisions in that time with with regard to uh New relationships with motherfuckers like, you know, marriages and boyfriend, anything like you can't make no big decisions in them times of crisis, man. When you feel in the effects of that because your judgment is fucked up, you super weak. The person that you that you that this that you entering into this with. Is suspect for even going along with it. They should. They should be like, nah. Let's just get past this. I got your back right now. Let's just get past this. If they ain't like that, they ain't got your interest. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then when motherfuckers see you weak, they rejoice. Motherfuckers rejoice at weakness, man. There is no mercy from bitches. When it, just because your parents, you think it's mercy from bitches because your parents died, or your father, your mother, nigga, I don't give a fuck, really. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers don't really give a fuck, man. Only you give a fuck. Only you give a fuck. Never depend on bitches, man. Never depend on bitches. And and you can't put nothing past nobody. If you if you stay in a state of I can't put nothing past nobody, right? I can't put nothing past nobody. And I can never ever trust bitches. Ever. You can't trust bitches. You should just assume that you can't like like any bitch your cousin your sister your mom you can't trust them you love them but you can't 100 percent it's influences out there niggas always have influence you gotta protect you gotta you gotta move better you know as a real nigga real nigga philosophy should include off the rip I can't put nothing past nobody. Anything can happen. With regard to guns and money, anything can happen. I can't trust nobody. Real nigga etiquette. Off the rip I can't put nothing past nobody Anything can happen You know what I'm saying I'm not from here I'm out of pocket I gotta figure that shit out You know and And you can't just be like you know what I'm saying I don't. I can't trust no humans no more. I'm. You know you can't be like that, nigga. You gotta be like. You gotta be like. You know what? I just gotta get it together, man. I, I just gotta get it together. Um, regrow, strengthen you. She good strengthen all your trials and tribulations. Strengthen you. You know your trials and tribulations strengthen you, man. You know what I'm saying? And 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 you know. You just got to keep going, man, through it and uh, learn from it and uh, 
can't put nothing past nobody family can't you can't trust nobody and but love everybody love but you can't trust them love them though but i just you know i can't trust them gotta take precautions man you know what i'm saying but anyway man i'm gonna leave it up right here man hold up right here i've been talking for two hours one man Oh really no not not two hours an hour and 30 minutes one man talking an hour and 30 minutes that ain't that bad that's kind of all right let me see uh i feel a little fatigued man i kind of wanna kind of wanna feel a little fatigued I want want to also say shout out to uh, ASAP Ferg, man. I think ASAP Ferg is the best rapper in ASAP, man. You know, I was looking at the Rolling Loud. Shout out to Rolling Loud, man, once again, man. Rolling Loud. I like watching Rolling Loud, man. I could never imagine myself being there in the crowd, out in the in the, in the audience, man, in the middle of that shit. I can't imagine being in the middle of that shit. I can't imagine being in the middle of that shit. I can never imagine doing that. I imagine getting in the middle of that shit and just motherfuckers stepping on my shoes and having a piss, man. And having a piss would be such a, tr- such, you. There's no way you could get into the, you know. The porta potty line must be astronomical. It's way over there. You just had to piss in a cup or some shit. How many motherfuckers piss in cups and put them down? Damn. Motherfuckers dirty, wet. You really want to be there, man. I got to watch that shit. I'm old. Damn. I guess if I was 20, I'd be, you know, I'd be out there. I could be out there. <laughs> Who was tight? Um, I saw Griselda came through a little bit better this time. Griselda sounded tight. Armani C- Caesar was up there. She looked uncomfortable with that shit on. I, f- I feel like bitches, if it seemed like a bitch should just wore a sweatsuit with some with some tennis shoes, she just been comfortable, just came up there and rocked. But bitches got to get all dressed like strippers and shit. That bitch looked uncomfortable, but she was rocking. Armani Caesar, what else was tight? Griselda, Action Bronson. You know, these did no these did no uh rapping over vocals niggas. These niggas was rocking. Who else? Uh J. Cole crush. J. Cole, J. Cole showed the high level skills. Um who else I see? Them drill niggas was horrible, man. Sleepy Hollow was kinda cool. The mother little drill niggas was horrible, man, though. Five EO Farm was horrible, man. I ain't mean, like um, Playboy Cardi, man. That nigga just came up there on some demon shit, like some demonic. Niggas is just that shit just looked demonic. Motherfuckers was going crazy, man. That nigga was not even rapping, man. That nigga was just a series of 
grunts and screaming. Niggas was just screaming. Niggas was just screaming. Nigga like Lil Uzi just got up there and was just screaming. Fuck the vocals, nothing, just. Travis Scott was tight too. Yeah. Travis Scott and them is arena motherfuckers. The rest of these motherfuckers is weak. Like Travis Scott and J. Cole was like higher echelon performance. Everybody else was like, you know. But anyway, I'm out, man. I'm out. Thank you for coming out. The Top Mac Nigga Show is a Boss Mac Industries production.